Good morning. Welcome to Terra at Home. I'm here with Michelle from Terra, and we love this time of year. It's our annual Christmas tree walk through the store because I'm amazed how these little Terra elves come into the store and overnight decorate these beautiful themed trees. So they're all over the place, meant to inspire. Absolutely meant to inspire. And some are very traditional and some have the latest trends in fashion. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. We work hard to try and do that. We want them to be different every year mm -hmm. because that allows you to see different things. You still have your traditional colors, like you said. You're never going to go away from the reds, golds, and silvers. Right. Whites, never going to happen. Exactly. But you can do it in various different ways to make them look different, mm -hmm. um, which you'll see reflected in these things this year. And believe it or not, we've already got 2016 under our belt for figuring out what that. they're going to look like. So I already know, looking ahead to another year. But it's because, I mean, obviously we know that's the way fashion works too, right? Yes. They work seasons and seasons ahead. So Absolutely. fortunately we are just going into the Christmas season. So we're going to talk about all these wonderful traits. So let's right. go to the first one right behind us here. All right, right behind you, you've got Silent Night, mm -hmm. which is your different grays and metallics and whites. So you'll see some animals mixed in with this one, the polar bears and some birds. You get your traditional skates and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little bit more sort of classy. You could make it right. very modern yes. if you if you are very a more modern household. I was just thinking that, yeah. Um, because there are elements of the modern. I love the witch's eyes in this theme because they're very traditional mm -hmm. um, in different colors and mm -hmm. the silvers and whites. Yeah, they're so pretty. And, and you know what, all the, just the variations again with just the whites and the silvers as you mentioned. Love the bow tie looking thing being yeah, going kind on. Kind of fun, <laughs> a little bit different. Last year we did the watches, so this year it was right. the bow ties. Something a little different. So cute though. And you know what's nice about this is because it is so neutral and you know if you're going into next year, you can take elements of this. Absolutely. The neutrals are so easy to move forward and pass along. And Try That's the thing. Like, I know my trees typically generally white and red in some capacity. Mm -hmm. Then last year I added in the chalk and right. this year I'm adding in a color and mm -hmm. you can do that and just have that special yeah. box of change it up kind of thing. Sure. So, so that you're not investing in a whole tree. Sometimes no, people can't do expensive. that around Christmas. You're trying to buy presents too, right? Yes. <laughs> okay, let's go to tree number two. Okay, tree number two, sleigh ride. Mm -hmm. This is fun. Um, it's all red and silver. Um, lots of cardinals. Uh, very, very shiny stars, and then you got a little bit of um, silver um, elements with some words, which are usually very like that. interesting on a tree because it yep. gives it a dimension it that does. you don't normally have. Yeah. So there's some great words on that tree, and then just a little bit of white. I always think it reminds me a little bit of a of a uh, Rockefeller Plaza, it even does. though it's just the simple colors. No, you're right, though. I was just thinking it's, it's got very a sort New of, York it, kind yeah. of like. Yep. So I, uh, that one's a little bit. Different. We did we did all solids last year. I think you'll remember in the red, silver, yeah, and gold. Mm -hmm. So it was nice this year to change it up to mm -hmm. have some dimensions to them. That's pretty. And I like the way you've done at the very top. Just you know, just having like some big, big spray. Poof. You don't have to have yeah. the, you know an, an angel or whatever maybe at the Tree top. toppers can be whatever Anything you want, you want them to, them to be. be. Yeah, exactly. All right. Exactly. Tree number three. Tree number three. Limelight. So we've got gold, copper, and a splash of green mm -hmm. in this one. So this one is again quite traditional. Um, not overly traditional I would say but you've got your gold and your coppers which mm -hmm. are really nice we haven't seen copper in a number of years no, with Christmas, but it's so really come back it has in other trends and other ways this year of 2015 we were seeing it so yeah. why not would it why would it not exactly. be a tree you see it in a lot of home fashion so the nice thing with this theme is there's not only a lot of ornaments but there's a ton of home decor mm -hmm. so you could then tie mm -hmm. in like if you decided that your tree was going to be gold you could have gold and copper accents on yes. your table, things mm -hmm. like that, which I you, really like about that. Well, you are seeing a lot of, uh, of the metals right now mm -hmm. in home decor, so the silvers and the golds all over your house. Yes. I mean, I even have a pillow that's mixed silvers and golds, right? So just throwing it into your into the bedroom and now onto the Christmas tree. Onto the Christmas tree, yeah, exactly. Like okay, moving on to number four. Number four is one of my favorites. I a, like this one. It's kind of a dive out for us in something different. Mm -hmm. um, it's called Christmas Morning, mm -hmm. and it's very pastel driven, yeah. um, a little bit more child oriented, um, whimsical. We actually have some really great wood trees that are nice for mantel pieces. Sure. Ornaments are really fun. Some of them light up. So mm. when you turn the light on on them, you can actually see oh, different colors go through them. Um, there's also different kinds of wood bells, mm -hmm. some witches' eyes again, but in the bright, vibrant colors that like right. our grandparents used to have on right, their trees. Right, exactly. We had to take you back to that. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. um, but it's really soft. It's pinks, blues, whites. Um, I think that you could take elements of either the blues and the whites for a little boy's room, or you could take mm -hmm. the pink and the white for a girl, or vice versa. I am not gender specifying here. 
exactly. what you could do, Why whatever. Not? Right. Um, but I think that they, there's little elements that they could put in their rooms too. Mm -hmm. There's stars for the wall. There's some toys, things like that. I like so it's that. It's a little bit more whimsical. And you know, and that's the thing. I'm very much about. I still tend to lean towards the reds and the greens, or you know, the the dark cherry reds at Christmas and the whites and stuff. But I, I actually really like that tree. I think it's cool. I do it's too. just outside of the box. It's just fun. It is. So. It's really fun. Mm -hmm. Okay, and next? Next we have Winter Walk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this one is a lot more of a snowy, wilderness, nature. Really, uh, it reminds me of growing up in British Columbia in the mountains. Yeah, I like this one too. So. I think there's something very beautiful about it and, and as you say, just very natural. It is very natural. Mm -hmm. One of the ornaments or the elements of it that I think is really cool is we have wood stars yes. that have a hook in the inside that then you can hang an ornament in. Love so those. you can hang it in a window or you could actually put them on the tree for bigger clumps of mm -hmm. texture to the tree and it's just different. Mm -hmm. It's really different. You got your owls and your foxes and your squirrels and your hedgehogs and all the yeah. animals that go with that. Yeah. Yeah, so the first the first tree I really noticed in the store was that one. Um, at the time obviously in our water down store it's right inside the door but there's just it's so beautiful and it, it there's and I love how it doesn't have to be all these tiny little um, ornaments that fit in the tree. Go big, big. sometimes. Like yes. some of them are really big. As you say, some of the stars, the wooden stars. Mm -hmm. It's cool because a lot of times you look at when, you know, the talent of designers that put together trees, right? And like you guys are so talented and you, but then when you look and you think, oh, I could do that. It's right? It's about simple. inspiration. Yep, it's very simple. And mm -hmm. a lot of times, if it's something bigger, you have to just make sure that you've melted it into the tree so that okay. it doesn't weigh it down. Or right. wire it if you're feeling like a safety reason for it to like fall out. Okay. But lanterns are so pretty in yes. a tree. And putting little like LED candles in them that you can mm -hmm. just flip the switch on as long as you can reach them all on your Christmas tree That's with the light idea. is so different, right? It's pretty. Mm -hmm. Do you remember those uh, lights? I remember when I was a kid, the little lights that had the little bubbles going in. Yes. Them. They were lit up and that adds a different kind of, you know, back yes. in the day and a sort of nostalgic feel. So having like the little tea lights, as you say, battery operated, they're everywhere now. They're everywhere. It's so easy so to do. Throw them and in the tree. lanterns come in all different shapes and sizes. So if you mm -hmm. have a massive tree, you could do big lanterns. If you have a smaller tree, you could do yeah. much smaller ones. But it's nice to add that different element of light mm -hmm. or the wood stars. I mean, you're not going to add pillows to a tree in your home, obviously, but <laughs> what about scarves? What about mittens? Do, yeah. You know, doing things like that, like string a thing of mittens and that's your string instead of the old popcorn string. Mm -hmm. Like there's so many different things that you can do. That's what I like about the the option for garland. It doesn't, it can be anything. Anything. Yes. And I like that idea of scarves and mitts and some of the stuff you guys do, it amazes me. I just, I'm like, I would have not thought about that. And you know, and, and obviously you're gonna have hopefully a ton of presents underneath your tree by the time Santa's there, but you have this beautiful tree that uh, I think the earlier the better when you're putting all the effort into Absolutely. the tree. Get it up. Yes. <laughs> Get well, on it. Because you want to enjoy it for a period of time. You right? do. It's a, and it's a lot of effort. We know it's way more fun to decorate than to tear down. Yes. But might as well get started. Go for it. Enjoy the time. Thanks, Michelle. No problem. Great ideas. Love the Terra Elves. Love your work. <laughs> That's it for now. More Terra Health to come. When I dream, I dream in color. And when I think of color, I think of Terra. Make your Christmas dreams come true at Terra, where color lives. Heritage Perennials, look for us in the blue pots.
Good morning. Welcome to Terra at Home. We are celebrating Christmas in the country and I'm here with Rose inside of your lovely abode at Westfield Heritage Village and um, I love that we have the fire on right now so <laughs> this is something that's definitely necessary and when people come to visit to celebrate Christmas with you the fire will be going, right? Oh certainly. Yeah, We never <laughs> let the fire go out. Awesome. Very important especially during these winter months. I can imagine. So tell me a little bit about uh, this lovely home that we're in and we're also going to talk about some of the traditions that people can experience and kind of compare them along the way from hundreds of years ago to now and see what have we held on to and what haven't we? Yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. Well, this particular home that we're inside of right now is the Lockhart Home. That's mm -hmm. our last name of our family, mm -hmm. so this um, we call it that. We're uh, in 1830 mm -hmm. right now, um, and it's a Scottish uh, home, so those are the right. kinds of traditions that we're clinging on to exactly. in here. So you'll see some of that with a lot of people have a British, uh, a British descent or background mm -hmm. may have hung on to a lot of these traditions. Yeah, for sure. Right? Um, as, and it's interesting to compare even Scottish to British traditions because mm -hmm. there's a little bit of difference yes, there too. Yes, absolutely is, that yeah. for sure. So if we talk about Scottish traditions in, in particular because of the Lockhart home, mm -hmm. um, we can see that there are some uh, Christmas pudding on the table. Yeah, we have mm -hmm. our Christmas pudding here. Mm -hmm. um, Christmas pudding has a lot of different traditions attached to it. Yes. But today I wanted to talk a little bit about the good luck that Christmas pudding brings. Okay. Um, especially in Scottish families, um, Christmas and New Year too, mm -hmm. are both really um, entangled with good luck and fortunes. Right. Um, and one of the things that uh, we talk about is the good luck ring. We of often call the wedding ring. Um, sure looks like one. <laughs> it sure does, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. This is uh, our nice nice big ring. Normally wouldn't be that quite that pretty. Mm -hmm. um, that gets plump plumped in while we're doing our Christmas baking. Mm -hmm. So it gets stuck inside the pudding bowl. And then everybody takes a turn to do a little bit of stirring. Mm -hmm. So if you stir it a couple of times, that mm -hmm. gives you some good luck for okay. the upcoming year. Would you like okay, to take I a stir? I feel like I should. I yeah. think I would, I would be remiss not to. So, <laughs> okay, stirring that in there. There yes. you go, perfect. <laughs> now, yeah, and so eventually, once it's all stirred up and all the ingredients are all put in, mm -hmm. spices and walnuts, raisins, currants, mm -hmm. we'll put it all together and we'll bake it. Okay. Um, and it will come out like this. Okay. And we've got it quite festive. Yes. Um, so that is the whole size of our dessert right. for our family of 10 inside this cabin, mm. <laughs> which doesn't seem like a lot, but it's quite a special thing to have dessert at all. Okay, so what happens when you get that portion? So we'll, we'll cut it all up, right. and the person who gets that slice mm -hmm. with the ring inside is expected to have great good fortune mm -hmm. in the coming year and will also probably be getting married. <laughs> wow, I think that's so cool. I love that tradition. That's so <laughs> fantastic. Obviously gingerbread, we have uh, gingerbread. I mean, really we've hung on to these, yes. you know, from 200 years ago plus, right? Yep. Um, ginger would be a special thing to have at this time period mm -hmm. um, because it's expensive. Sure, Sorry, my hat keeps sure. sliding. That's okay. <laughs> it's a special thing to have at this time period mm -hmm. um, because it, uh, ginger actually is an imported spice. Mm -hmm. So it would be something that you'd have to purchase, which is something uh. that's not often done. At so Christmas this would be special time. for this time of year, for mm -hmm, sure. To have for this. sure. Okay. Um, and of course, it's nice um, because it's spicy. It gives you a nice, warm, mm -hmm. comfortable feeling. And it really does make you think of this time of year, no matter what. Oh no matter yeah, if it for was sure. From, you know, 1830 or you know, 2015. So when we talk about some of the decorations as well, mm -hmm. um, you know, what do we see around us? We see fresh greens. Yep, fresh mm -hmm. greens are, are predominant here. Mm -hmm. Some of the more typical um, Christmas things like a tree, for example, mm -hmm. are not a Scottish tradition, yeah. they're a Germanic tradition. Right. So we won't have Christmas trees inside our house here, mm -hmm. but we do cut lots of fresh greens and bring them inside. Mm -hmm. Another thing that we often are decorating are with different symbols like angels mm -hmm. or candles um, and paper roses or apples. Um, straw and things like that are good reminders of the nativity play and, sure. and especially angels. Because so. you were saying, you know, you were saying uh, before to me that it, it is based around a religious holiday. So yeah, it's really, it's still, that focus is still very much there. For then. especially for um, a Scottish family mm -hmm. like this, uh, for um, uh, any British um, United Kingdom family, there mm -hmm. that it's still fairly rooted in the in right. the religious. Um, yeah, I can imagine. Okay, so yeah. what about something as uh, wonderful as, fr as fresh fruit, like oranges and citrus? Would they be able to have something like that here? Um, in 1830s, it'd be something you could get, but mm -hmm. expensive. My bad. Very expensive, big treat. So mm -hmm. um, you could get that um, uh, on Christmas or sure. Christmas Eve. Um, 
more often than not, you get oranges probably in a, 20 years into our future. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's yeah. still pretty early. So they're not quite there yet. Not so quite. It's, it's pretty simple, mm -hmm. but it's still a wonderful time of year. And so with this, we're inviting guests to come and visit mm -hmm. at West Hill Heritage Village to experience this Christmas, to go back a couple hundred years and, and see what it's really like. Mm -hmm. So tell me about uh, some of the experiences people can have when they come in and kind of go, back in time. Yeah, well, one of the, the best things about Westfield is that not only are you traveling back in time, but mm -hmm. you're traveling through time as sure. well. So we start at 1790s and go all the way up through the 1910s. Wow. So there's lots and lots of different um, lifestyles that you'll see mm -hmm. and different traditions that you can explore. Mm -hmm. um, for example, those Christmas trees. Right. Um, in uh, the uh, 1850s or so, it became really uh, popular to hang your Christmas tree upside down. I've seen so you'll probably with that. <laughs> <laughs> you'll probably see an upside down Christmas tree. Did this they have year. it mixed up and then? And they were they not informed it was supposed to go the other way around? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure exactly why they decided. <laughs> That's um, so funny. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, of course, you'll see Christmas caroling. Mm -hmm. There'll be sleigh rides, um, which is a typical winter tradition sure. uh, through all of Canada. Mm -hmm. um, the but the whole like area that. is going to be decorated for Christmas, it so will, it's not yeah. just your home here. All the different homes, as you say, ranging through mm -hmm. um, the, the centuries will be decorated so people can experience different time periods and how they celebrated Christmas. Yes, exactly. Which is kind of a nice um, thing. And you'll see lots of different uh, different decorations and different foods mm -hmm. um, through the different time periods as well. Sure. I think that's great about this place, as you mentioned, because you know you have your time period, but various time periods. Uh, these are real homes, heritage homes that have been brought in and reconstructed and to this area to create this little village, mm -hmm. which is fabulous. We've been here before with the show, and uh, it's, it gives everybody a, just a bit of a glimpse over time here in Canada. Exactly, right? yeah, you, so you get to, to see a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. Exactly, so I heard that there's going to be some freshly baked bread too when people come through. Yes, yeah, bread will be, be fr being freshly made, so that'll be How lovely. Nice everybody that? gets to have a mm -hmm. nice nice taste. Mm -hmm. The bread that um, is made here at our bake ovens are just absolutely delicious. <laughs> My bet, and smelling that when you're coming out so make sure you bundle up and you have different mm. events running throughout the course of December. People can go onto the website because we're going back to my time period now and we have this thing <laughs> called the interweb. <laughs> I've never heard of such a creature. And, yeah. So people can go on to the website and find out more information about all the different types of events that are going on but uh, mm -hmm. this one is particularly is December 13th. Right? Yeah the Christmas mm -hmm. in the country is December 13th and mm -hmm. as you say there's other um, evening programs too which sure. may, brings out an entirely different kind of magic here at, the, at Westfield where you I get bet. to see everything candle lit yeah. um, by fires with all the Christmas lights Wonderful. lit up it so it's very pretty at the in the evening too how nice so we're thinking ahead now as we make our way and this is the time of year right already we're thinking so much about Christmas so bundle up and get your family out here and talk and kind of show the, the traditions from past and what we have carried through to now exactly so thank you Rose for letting yeah, me into your home maybe coming. I'll come by and, uh, and bring my son and we can talk about some of the Scottish traditions <laughs> Wonderful. So. that's it for now we'll have more Tara at home to come when I dream I dream in color, and when I think of color, I think of Tara. Make your Christmas dreams come true at Tara, where color lives. You've sat under them and built forts in them. You've swung from them and fell out of them. You've even fallen in love under them. Trees have always held a special place in our hearts and memories. A natural beauty, trees will grow with you and your family and bring color and nature into your world. For your assurance of quality, look for trees and shrubs with the medallion plant tag. Medallion plants, locally grown, the pride of Niagara. Good morning. Welcome back to Terra at Home. We're here with Chef Mark from La Piazza Allegra restaurant in Hamilton. And uh, as we make our way through to the end of November, end hard of to November, believe, yes. uh, we, are, we have a nice dish that still, again, involves some greens and... Yep, we're getting into some of those winter greens, so we have some Swiss yeah. chard over here. And then, you know, at this time of the year, I love trying to incorporate as much what I call Canadian as possible. Okay. So we have some pure Canadian maple syrup. <clears throat> so awesome. what we're going to do is we're going to be doing a glazed, a maple glazed uh, salmon fillet. Mm. 
We're gonna do it with some sesame seeds. We got some soy sauce. I got some. This is really great. This is a maple sugar. Oh, I was wondering. Well, yes, this is a great. That's just gonna disappear on you. <coughs> you look and it's gone. <laughs> so we're gonna use that. Um, and again, like I said, you know, this is the time that maple syrup is being harvested and stuff mm -hmm. like that. You're mm -hmm. getting outdoors. So that's why I've decided to do this dish. And again, this okay. one, this one does work well in the summer as well. Mm -hmm. The only thing is you might want to switch up the greens and go to something a little bit lighter in the summertime as opposed to the Swiss chard or mm -hmm. some of that okay. more Makes robust sense. and roughage ones. Okay, so we're going to make the mixture. So we have some light soy sauce and take a little bit of garlic. And you don't need a lot of soy sauce. You just want a little bit in there. And same with the garlic. Okay. There we go. I have some sesame seed oil. Now, mm. the sesame seed oil is going to add that smokiness. Sure does. Doesn't take much either, does it? Not at so all. So good. And then we have our maple syrup. Awesome. And there we go. And we're going to hang on to this, and we're going to put that after. So I'm going to heat up my pan. And what I want to do is sear the filet first. Before you put any sauce on That's it? That's right. Okay. I'm gonna put a little oil in the pan. I love about fish is that it cooks so quickly too. It you does. You have a really quick dinner. A little bit of kosher salt. I'm gonna salt both sides of this. When I go to sear it, I'm gonna sear the skin. I took the skin off of this filet, but we're gonna sear the skin side down. Okay. Okay. You don't have to remove the skin though, right? You don't have to. Um, if you don't, definitely want it scaled, okay? Or else you're gonna end up with scales oh, everywhere. Oh, yes, <coughs> yes. But, now, got that pan nice and hot. And there we go. I'm just gonna put that in and start searing it. We'll put this aside. And then we take our winter greens. Okay. And sometimes people, we, you, you, we know these exist, we know they're good for us, they're hardy, but a lot of times, what do we do with them? So, exactly. as many so ideas is, as we can come up with. Yeah, nice and simple. Now, what I did, I took most of the stems off. I am mm -hmm. gonna put this end in a little bit earlier, okay. just because it's a little bit thicker. Mm -hmm. And I just have some water in the pan, and I'm gonna wilt it down. <clears throat> a little bit of salt and pepper. So the water's gonna kinda create a bit of a steaming effect, right? That's right, okay. that's right. And then we're going to finish it off with some sesame seed oil as well. Let's move this aside. Now, I'm not looking to cook this very okay. long. It's just a quick sear on one side and then the other side. And that's just going to seal in those flavors. Then we're going to put it straight onto our uh, parchment paper. Okay. So I have a pan with parchment paper. We're going to brush it with the uh, mixture that we made with the maple syrup. Mm -hmm. We're going to put it in the oven and we're going to bake it on a broil. Again, I want it nice and quick real high heat, get that to caramelize very quickly mm -hmm. onto the salmon and uh, seal good. it in without overcooking the salmon. Because the last thing you want is overcooked salmon. No. See, that's, as you say, you don't want to be keeping that in the pan for too long because it'll no. cook so quickly. It will cook quickly. There we go. And now, I love all your cute little pans that you have. <laughs> these tiniest these are, little... These are my little baking pans, I know, yes. they're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's move this over here. And we have a little extra water. <clears throat> so if it's not wilting down fast enough, just add a touch more water. Okay. Now you can braise, you know, Swiss chard. You can yeah. put it in a pot and braise it down nice and slow mm -hmm. for a long period of time. You can do that as well if you'd like. Um, but this one, doing it fairly quickly, trying to time it with the salmon, so keep it nice and quick. That's mm -hmm. why I chopped it a little smaller. It's always nice to find new ideas for salmon too. A lot of people, you know, people eat uh, try to eat as many as much fish as they can in a week so having different recipes and different yeah. ideas for it I'm always doing the lemon and the dill and all that but this one's nice yeah this is a nice one and like I said you know you're, you're incorporating that whole Canadiana with the maple syrup it gives a nice sweetness mm -hmm. I'm gonna baste it really well there that's and that's good. ready to go into the oven okay now we're gonna take the rest of these and we'll put them into the pan you're gonna have to add a little bit more salt now, the flavor from Swiss chard, is it, is it, um, I'm just trying to recall right now, is it bitter or it can it, be? It can be bitter. Mm -hmm. If you, if you cook it for, um, till you start wilting it down, 
and then you go beyond that point, it will get bitter, and then if you braise it, it'll start bringing out the sweetness again. Okay. So it'll go sweet, bitter, sweet as you cook it. Okay. okay. And that's why we got to be kind of quick about this. <laughs> we we'll want to make sure that. You know, it is wilted down, it is softer than it is, mm -hmm. you know, so it has softened up, especially those stems at the end. Right. Um, but you don't want to get it to the point where it's super bitter, although you could get away with it because you have all that sugar in this, that'll help balance it out It'll as well. It'll balance it a little bit better. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you can see that the water's all drying out of this now. What a healthy dish though, this is great. And you don't have to add any starch to it at all. And, no, you don't uh, need a starch you, for this one. But you obviously, you know, you can, but. Yeah, you don't need a starch for this one. So. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take that maple sugar, mm -hmm. and I'm just going to sprinkle some right on top. And that's just going to enhance that maple flavor, and we're going to use a little bit more of it when it comes out. Ah. So you've added sugar, but you're also okay. adding that maple flavor. Mm -hmm. And again, that's one of those items that this is the time of year you'll be able to find it. Sure. It'll get a little trickier when you get into spring and summer. Okay, um, right. I think a lot of it around here gets shipped away, so. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are like the main producers in the world for it, right? So. Yes, we are. Ontario and Quebec. Hmm. There we go. So that's and we've nice managed and soft. to make everything maple now. It's amazing what you can get. We maple. can make everything maple. <laughs> now I'm going to add it's some of thing. that sesame seed oil. Oh, nice. Now again, you have to be careful with that sesame seed oil. It has a low smoking point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So it's it will burn if you're not careful with it. But okay. we're going to add a smokiness to this as well. Awesome. All right, we're going to continue this. We'll get this uh, salmon in the oven, and we'll be right back. Live color fully at Terra, where color lives. Summer camp means a lot to me, and it's the best place on the earth. With the Hamilton Spectator Summer Camp Fund, we believe that a single experience can change a child's life. Every year, the fund supports around 800 kids who wouldn't otherwise have an opportunity to go to camp. I get to let all my joy out and have the best time I ever can. By giving kids a camp experience, we give them a glimpse of what is possible. Donate today. Good morning, welcome back to Terra at Home. We have this beautiful salmon that we've just taken out of the oh. oven and we've already, we seared it originally, so it wasn't in the oven for very long. No, it was only in there probably about four or five minutes. Again, a little higher heat. Um, so it's, if you push on it, you can mm -hmm. see that it's not flaking apart completely, mm -hmm. which means that it's still about medium in the middle, which is what you're looking for. If okay. it starts breaking apart right away, yes. then you know you've overcooked it, okay? It's gone to that uh, flaky point. Too far gone, too late now. Too late, <laughs> too far. You're eating it. That's right. <laughs> We have that Swiss chard. So this was a full bunch of Swiss chard. You Look can see that. how much it wilted down. Yes. Um, but I got it on that high heat. We added some sesame seed oil to give it a nice little fry. So we're gonna plate this. Just a reminder as you're plating that you can uh, grab this recipe from our website at terragreenhouses.com. Different ways to make your salmon. Yeah. There we go. Take that salmon. That right, looks great. Right on top, and you can see yeah, that there's still some sugars, sugars that want to stick to it. Yes. So we're going to add that. Mm -hmm. There we go. And then we have some sesame seeds. Mm -hmm. We're going to put some sesame seeds. Again, adds that smokiness. Also adds that little bit of crunch to the, to the mm -hmm. dish. I like that. There we go. Then I'm going to take a little bit of this and I'm just going to sweeten the whole thing up with this maple sugar. Oh boy. So definitely a more Asian influenced. Definitely Asian influenced with a little bit of Canadian mixed into it with mm -hmm. the maple syrup, but the sesame seeds do pull out that smokiness and that mm -hmm. Asian flavor. So, and again, you know, you could do this throughout the summer. The only issue is in the summer, you might want to switch up the greens to something a little bit lighter, something a little bit less hearty. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. I, I like that idea. It's great. And again, yeah. reminder, if you do not have maple sugar, obviously, just you can omit that, right? Oh, you, you can do. omit it. Yeah, that's just you a bonus that, that we were able to have. So. Awesome. Well, that looks beautiful. Can't wait to try it. Thanks, Mark. That's it for now. Have yourself a great weekend.